Okay, what do you guys think of my painting apron that my mother made me? It's supposed to look like a mushroom. I think she did a good job. Um, anyway, it's nice to wear something while you're painting to cover up your clothes. If you're wearing nice clothes like I happen to be today. Um, this apron's really cool because it has a pocket. So I can hold like paintbrushes in there. It's just pretty convenient. Okay, so let's get started with the painting. I have my stencil laid out. Um, what I'm going to want to do is go make the first color a dark color. Then the next color is going to be a light color, a dark color, a light color, and so on until you get through all your colors that you're using. So my the letter E, the top color is red, and I want the A to be green on top. So I'm going to save this green for the last color. The first color is supposed to be a dark one, so I'm going to use the red. It really doesn't matter what colors you choose to use first or last, it's completely up to you. But you do want to do light and dark and light and dark because then when you distress through the colors, uh, the colors will show up more prominently. So look at this beautiful red. This red is Fireworks Red from American Paint Company. I'm just going to dab it on just a little tiny bit <clears throat> and even wipe it off a little bit. You don't want globs of paint on here because then it'll seep underneath your stencil and it won't look very good. You're gonna, you'll have to fix it at that point. So try not to um, soak your brush with paint. Okay, I'm going to let this color dry all the way, and then I'm going to put a contrasting color over the top of it. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to dry, and then I will put another color on top. Okay, so I have decided that my next color over the red is going to be white because we're going with contrasting colors, so a dark red with a pure white. I'm using American Paint Company's Navajo White for this. What I'm going to do is just dab a little bit on there, wipe it off on the can. All right, for my next color over the white, it's going to be Main Harbor Blue from the CC Caldwell Paint Company. I really love CC Caldwell's paints. They're really nice. So if you ever get a chance to purchase some of these, uh, you should do it because you will be amazed. All right, now we're going to go with the gray. It is called Seattle Mist from CC Caldwell. Okay, so I have finished the E, the A, and now I'm on the last step, um, which is the T, the last letter of my project here. Um, you're going to notice on the E and the A that I have this white wash over the top of it. I'm using a CC Caldwell Dover White. It's going to go on kind of translucent, and I'm, the reason I'm adding this over the last color of my letter is because I want to add, I want to create like a, 
an aged look about it and this is a great way to get that so this is an optional step you don't have to do it but I just think it looks really cool now with this one I'm not going to dab it like I did all the other colors I'm actually just going to kind of wipe it on and I'll put it thicker in some places than others once this dries, it will, you'll still be able to see the blue underneath it. You don't want to put um, a wash on too thickly because then it, it defeats the purpose of a wash altogether. And you won't be able to sand it off very easy. All right, so that's it for the wash. That's my last step. I'm gonna let that dry and then I will get to sanding the letters. All right, so I finished the E and the A and now I have the last color on the T and I'm gonna show you how to bring out all those beautiful colors that you worked so hard on. Um, so you're gonna want two different kinds of sandpaper a 150 grit and a 320 grit. Start off with the 150. Um, you can use a sanding block if you wish, but I find that if you just put your finger behind the sandpaper like this um, and just start sanding away, it works pretty good. So I'm gonna do that. Just use various pressures on different parts that you want certain colors to show through. Okay, so for the first step, I use the 150 grit. And then you're gonna wanna go over it with your 320 to smooth it out. And that's it. The next step I'm gonna do is just cover it with a finishing wax to protect the color from fading. And um, then I will show you what it looks like when I'm all done. All right, so I've taken my sign outside. Not for any particular reason, just because it's beautiful today. Um, the last step of uh, using chalk paint on any project is always going to be with a clear wax or a dark wax um, or some kind of other sealant product like polyurethane. My product of choice is CC Caldwell Clear Wax. It is eco-friendly. It doesn't have any smell to it. It's just wonderful. And today I'm going to be using my wax brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to cover this entire sign with wax, especially getting the parts that you've painted to protect them from fading. You just want to dab some on there and just get after it. See how it darkens the color up right away. Here's the sign all finished. It looks pretty antique and old. It has some warm appeal to it. Have fun making your own kitchen sign. Play with it. Try different words and messages. Please like my video and please share it with at least one person. Thank you for watching.